What's up guys? We are back with another Figura Obscura review, jumping into the 2023 retailer exclusive wave. So this wave is like half mythic, half Figura Obscura. And we're starting off with the new and different Headless Horseman 2-pack. I got these in from Sci-Fi Toys. I'll have a link down below if you want to check them out uh, as well. But we had, you know, the Headless Horseman already, and this is a repaint, a redo for anybody who wants a different one, or if you just happen to miss that one and don't want to pay aftermarket prices. Now, this guy and his horse still come in that familiar style, massive deluxe package that we saw the first figure in. So you've got this really fantastic shot of the Horseman in all of his pumpkin glory there on the front. And then the back gives you this really awesome shot of him, you know, just about to throw down and blast some folks with pumpkins. What I really like about these releases in general is this aspect of it. So you've got, you know, your chipboard style of package here that has the big display piece for the artwork. And then you've got kind of this landscape on the inside here. So if you're a big fan of Nate Barch artwork, you've got plenty of opportunities to, you know, oogle at his work. The box within though, of course, it's typical for uh, an oversized package for legions because we've got a horse and we've got the horseman here so you've got them in the window and then we've got more of that nate barge artwork that wraps around and then of course the, the back gives us that big shot again of the horseman about to just lay waste to some unsuspecting victims so yeah fantastic presentation as usual again i love this stuff it just makes things seem a little bit more deluxe but let's do it let's pull them out and take a look and here we go, out of the package, our Figura Obscura Headless Horseman. This is, again, the retailer-exclusive variant, so it's a repaint of that figure that you may already have, but it's been changed up enough that you might actually want to get him again, especially if you're in the market for horses. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. We're going to talk about him individually first, and then we'll get to his four-legged friends. So we've got a head that can look up really good. It cannot look down very well because of the collar situation here. You've got good tilt though, rotation. This is, you know, classic 1.0 legions, basically. Arms out at the shoulders. These are newer parts, newish parts anyway, that came in the Alithia wave. You've got swivel. We've got our single jointed swiveling elbow, basically 90 degrees there. You've got gauntlet swivel, you've got wrist hinge and swivel. Uh, we've got various sets of hands that have lateral and vertical hinges. He goes backwards slightly, he goes forwards a little bit. You do have your tilt side to side and rotation down there, of course. Legs out. They kick forward pretty much all the way. And then you've got some back kick as well. You've got your thigh twist. We've got our single jointed, roughly 90 degree swiveling knee. And then you've got swivel at the top of the ankle. And then you've got your rocker and you've got pretty decent hinges down here too. So again, 1.0 legions. And if you already have the first headless horseman, you know, well, quite literally everything to expect here, but it's still very much par for the course. Anything 1.0 mythic legions related, you'll be familiar with the range, how he moves, and what he's capable of. Now, visually, I was honestly kind of on the fence with this one because I wasn't sure if I, if I necessarily felt there was a need for two of this particular figure. And that seems dumb coming from me, especially when I buy multiples of just about everything anyway. But I wasn't sold on this color scheme at first. And it was mostly because I couldn't tell exactly how purple he was. Is he just a little purple or is he really purple? And he's pretty purple. Uh, there is a decent difference in color from just top to bottom on this guy. And there's one major, major visual change about this figure that apparently I forgot about it or maybe it wasn't advertised all that well. I honestly don't remember at this point. But there's glow in the dark on this figure and on the box as well. So we're going to go ahead and just bring in the first headless horseman here we're going to get these comparisons done so you can see exactly what i'm talking about here so we've got our old and our new and again same figure you know the sculpt is the same but everything is slightly tweaked on this guy the big aspect of change here is what is mostly black on the first one with his tunic is now purple and it's kind of a deep purple but even things like the collar is purple on the you know the collar around the neck the kerchief that hangs down is a, is a deeper, more bright purple color. There's even a color change on his shin guards down there. It does have sort of a purpley hue to it. The boots are also different. You've got color changes on the pouches on his belt, things like that. 
And then the head sculpt has different paint applications. Instead of that orangey yellow color in the mouth and the eyes, you've got this really awesome, and I absolutely love this, probably my favorite difference between the two, the green in there. It just makes him look a little bit more evil, but that also glows in the dark. So anything green on this release glows. That goes for the, the Headless Horseman heads as well as the horse and the box too. So there's stuff that glows all over the place. I'm really, really happy uh, with that. Just based on the fire aspect of things, it, it works. It's thematically pretty cool. And then we also have a new cape here. Well, it's the same style of cape, but the inside is orange, which you already know I'm a fan of and the outside is still black. I will say one major thing that I'm noticing here, and it, you know, it may be something I'm just, I don't know, it just sort of seems this way to me. I feel like the wire between these two, I feel like the wire is weaker on the new figure than the old. I'm having trouble posing it super dynamically. This one doesn't have the strongest wire either, don't get me wrong. Uh, so it's not gonna be always billowing behind him, but I definitely feel like the new one isn't quite as robust, but they are. They are still very, very similar, of course, but they they are quite unique at the same time. So I'm really happy having this one in hand now, and I'm kind of leaning towards more that I really like this new one more than the last one. You know, it'll probably change tomorrow, but I really like seeing this kind of, you know, almost cartoony looking purple on this guy with this orange pumpkin head with the green fire in there. And I really like this orange cape. You know, it may not be the strongest wire, like I said, but I do like that orange cape. It pops. And it's very different. It's going to stand out, especially amongst other, we'll say, relatively less garish colors within the mythic cosmic figure Obscura world. So this guy does look really cool. Uh, I'm happy with this mix of parts. You know, it still very much fits the theme for the Headless Horseman. He's not overly armored. You know, he doesn't have pauldrons or anything like that. He's not meant to be that kind of guy. So I do think it works well. I will mention this is one of those newer torsos that has the torso plate. So you could take that chest piece off if you're into that sort of thing, if you're doing the custom stuff. But overall, I think this is a really cool and different enough version of the Horseman from that first one that you might want to double dip on him, but it also might be one you'd go for even if you don't have that first one and we're sort of wondering which one would you prefer. I feel like this one does have a little bit of a leg up just by having that glow-in-the-dark feature, but the color palettes are, of course, quite a bit different too. Now, as far as accessories goes for the Horseman himself, He's got that same spread that we saw in the first release, so if you got those, you know what to expect. But one of these, well, a couple of these accessories are still some of just my favorite things. So we get one of my favorite Four Horsemen Studios head sculpts in general with this one here. It's green, so of course that means it's going to glow in the dark, and it looks just awesome when it glows. But you've got the pumpkin, you know, exploding with fire out the back, out the eyes, maniacal smile on there. And then, of course, we do have the extra hand that has the neck peg in there, so you can use this as an example of him throwing his head. Now, just like with the first one, this is going to be a balancing act because this thing is heavy, and the wrist joints on these figures were, well, they were never meant to do something like this. So it does take some balancing act to get that to work, but it does look awesome nonetheless. And then we also get the neck meat again, which is still one of the weirdest accessories, but it's integral here. We get some extra hands, so we get a set of sort of grasping hands. He's got one of them on right there, so you get those. We have got a set of vertically hinged gripping hands, and then he's got a single, uh, single left lateral hinged gripping hand, and he also does include just a standard sword. That's really all he needs. Nothing crazy, no, no signature weapons or anything like that for this guy. The big uh, showstopper kind of accessories are indeed the head sculpts, the neck meat, and that peg to allow him to throw his own head at someone. So he's got the same stuff that we saw, but it's all very much themed to the idea of the story, what he does, what he looks like, and who doesn't need some neck meat on their shelf. Now, as far as the horseman's, well, his horse, it's the same horse we've seen how many times now? Five? Six times? A number of times. We got a moose, too. I keep forgetting about that. And a centaur. So we've seen these parts over and over and over again. And this is literally, you know, just a carbon copy of the first horseman's horse. The big difference here comes in small ways. So it's all tied to color palette. The bridle, the equipment, stuff like that is slightly changed up in color. It's very similar, but it's, it's different enough. 
The big change comes in the accent color. So the first Horseman's Horse, that keeps sounding weird to say that, was black and red. This one is playing up that green idea. And like I mentioned, this guy also does glow in the dark. So these green accents will glow. And I'm really happy with this. It's a small thing, but I think I think there's the, the aspect of me being slightly surprised that this stuff glowed in the dark. I guess I just never paid attention or forgot or whatever. But it was nice to get that out. And I got this in hand. I said, this is going to glow in the dark. And I had to test it. And I thought it was just fun. It's cool. And I love glow in the dark stuff. But this particular usage of it is minimal, but it works really well. It gives off a very ethereal, spectral kind of feeling, especially with the hooves. So it's just kind of different, fun, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. Everything else here is exactly the same you would expect to see on the other horses. So you've got, you know, the Knapsack of Doom back there, like I mentioned with uh, Athon's review, however many years ago that was, and it's all the same kind of stuff. That is to say, it's a damn good looking horse. You know, it just comes down to how many horses do you need in your collection. Now, as far as moving them around a little bit, you've got Bobble at the neck, you've got Swivel, uh, you've got Swivel and uh, Hinge at the at the head. The All the legs hinge, they swivel, you've got knees, and then you've got hoof articulation also. So you do have control over each point on the, on the legs. You've got in and out Swivel on the back legs to help with stability, and then there's also an extra cut here as well. And then you can swivel all those joints, swivel those knees, hinge them, all that good stuff. And then you've got hinge and swivel at the tail back there. So it's normal for something like this. Moves well enough. Uh, here is our Horseman 4 size comparison. So you can get an idea of exactly how big this guy is. These are big horses. Uh, they definitely seem to fit more in line with your actual seven inch scale figures. They look huge next to a lot of other, you know, we'll say true 112 Hasbro size, Marvel Legends, stuff like that. And then here he is, you know, on it just for that shot, just real quick and dirty like. He's headless for sure now, so we'll go up a little bit. And I think he looks really good on this. You know, it's not, not a balancing act necessarily to get him on there if you want to get some crazy dynamic poses or him the classic rearing back look. That's going to take some balance, but just getting him on there and having him hold the reins, very simple, no muss, no fuss, none of that kind of stuff. Uh, so I am very happy with the way he turned out. I have a stable of horses now, whether I need them or not, but they do look good, they move well, and they just go so well with this particular idea, with this particular set, and then of course, with Mythic Legions proper, in general, you can't go wrong with throwing a horse into the mix. So yeah, overall, this is a really solid set. Again, I'm going into this knowing essentially every aspect of what this figure and the horse is and is capable of, but it's those same good releases just done again in a slightly different way with a few surprises, at least for me, when it comes to the glow-in-the-dark aspect on these figures, which I either did know or just completely forgot about or should have assumed were going to glow, but it was kind of nice to be surprised by that. I do think this release does look really good. I'm really happy with the purple color that we've got this time around. I'm happier with it in person than I thought I would be. But in particular, I really like the green aspect for the pumpkins. If anything, I like those better than the first release. And I really like this cape color, although I do think, again, that the wire is a little on the weak side. And then the horse is the same solid horse we've had before. But again, with those green accents that just make it look ethereal and a little bit more evil to me. So that's going to do it for this look at the Figura Obscura retailer exclusive Headless Horseman. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.